you get real quality when you come to a Compass gig. Um, we're just going to, we've got to finish at eight. We'll take three questions and then um, we'll ask for uh, quick responses back in this order and we'll give David the privilege of coming up with uh, the final uh, comment. So I'll just take three people, a woman there, a woman at the back and this guy at the front. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, please. You were saying, Caroline, about the fact that three main parties are all committed to privatisation and marketisation. And I really wondered, um, Evan, if you would say something about that, and also David, in terms of, um, you know, if we're actually going to see a change in our society, I feel that there's not enough talked about um, the whole idea of cooperation in terms of delivering and providing services. And I wonder if that is somewhere where that alignment of the different parties could actually take place. Thank you. There was a woman at the back, just slightly had a hand up. Yeah, thank you, please. There's an incubus on our unequal society. It's the monarchy and the aristocratic privilege. Mm. Now, as far as the big society goes, David Cameron actually said, we're, we are all yeah. going to celebrate a royal wedding. Please, will you at the front, please could you say we're not all celebrating, we think it's... It's um, just celebrating the, the privilege. People in Egypt are getting rid of Mubarak this evening. Why, when can we elect our head of state? Okay. Okay. Please, <laughs> when? <laughs> There's a one at the front here. Good evening. Um, early on in your speech, you alluded to to the fact that no one political tradition has a monopoly on wisdom or truth. I agree. Um, and as you may or may not know, Compass at the moment is balancing its members on opening up its membership to give full and equal rights to individuals ineligible to be members of the Labour Party. What are your views on this? And can this be the starting point of a new progressive alliance? Um, Ed wants to take a couple more, so we will <laughs> take a couple more and try and get a few more in. Um, over this side, the guy in the white jumper, and then, and then right at the very back, and that'll be five, and that'll do. Thank you. Yes. Can I ask Ed Miliband? Is we, I think we'll go to everyone rather than, you know. All right. Well, can I ask uh, the Labour Party new leader? Is he, <laughs> <laughs> is, is he going to go away and seriously cons consider a realignment of the mind and open up a serious conversation with the people of this country about building a good society? And is he going to explain to people the massive, massive power of the very wealthy and the hold they have on our political system, and which, if he got into power, he would have to fight against. It is so endemic, the power of these people. Is he going to re try and change the minds of people in this country to understand what really goes on? He'll only do it if we help him. Let's, one of the, lastly, Jamie at the back. We're at the very, very back. Thank you. Sorry, I just wanted to raise the, the spectre of, of, of the third way because um, I just rather wonder whether or not we're still feeling around for this imaginary third way. And actually, we might have to accept that in order to get to the better society, we actually need to adjust our own attitude to materialism individually, not just the super rich and royalty and such like. And so might it actually be part of, of making the case to the British public now that we let go of our obsession with being a very competitive international economy and such like, and we let go of our own personal sort of consumption targets? And if that is implicit in any move towards a better society, is that an argument we can win with the British public? Mm. Good stuff. OK, five fantastic questions, yeah, and some sympathy in the audience for that. So let's run back this way, Francesca. Thank you. Just a couple of minutes. Just pick out yeah. the bits you want. Extremely, extremely quick. Back, back to front. Um, personal consumption survey. Yeah, I mean, you know, I gave it away. I was a 70s feminist, and we used to talk about the personal is political. And what inspires me about the kind of movement that I was describing, for all that I think that it is dangerous without good leadership, is that I think it is about people questioning their own behaviour, their own attitudes, what they want to do 
to, to make a better world. And without that, there's, there's no hope. We've seen the, the, the elite way. It is absolutely the future. So I, I think you're absolutely right. Um, realignment of the mind. Well, we've just got to make sure that, that, he, that he does do that, haven't we? That's down to all of us. It's a continuation of the same point. Yeah. It's not down to one leader, one person. It's down to all of us. But I think you know, everyone in this room who voted did vote for the right leader to, we, that we could influence, if I may say so. Um, new Progressive Alliance, absolutely, I voted for that. And finally, the world wedding. I can't resist a party myself. I, I can't be sour-faced you know, about anybody's <laughs> wedding. However, we could take a lesson from Tahrir Square. We'd all go down to Parliament, Parliament Square. You know, there's no tents there anymore. We'd all go in our finery and wedding dresses and everything and make our point. <laughs> <laughs> Buy one first. Um, <laughs> um, on, the, on the compass question, uh, I mean, I would find it strange if Compass, given what Compass stands for, uh, decided that it was not going to be a, a, an open uh, place where there would be equal rights for people who subscribe to the views but were not in the Labour Party. And, uh, and I think just at the moment, I, it's really hard, it's just really hard to argue that the Labour Party is or should be the sole uh, um, resting place for people, uh, for, for progressive people on a whole range of issues, whether it be the environment or civil liberties, as well as some of the economic and social questions. Um, there's two things that we, we haven't dealt with around that question, which is, which is the, and this is where capitalism does conflict with democracy, which is the foul polluting influence of big money in politics and it's a prerequisite that we have to get rid of big money out of politics and that's part of the political reform we need to see and parties that get into power uh, with funding have an automatic resistance to to getting rid of that funding and parties that attract more funding in opposition because they're more popular relatively than when they were in government also find it difficult but that's essential but if we have electoral reform, even the modest form that's on offer, and I hope Ed will share a platform with anyone who supports uh, his manifesto commitment in that respect, then I think we really have, there's a real challenge to start aligning, trying to align manifestos. I want the Liberal Democrat manifesto at the next election to be saying, as the, if the economy and the deficit is tackled, we want to reinvest in public services and reinvest in pro-poor areas and not argue that a smaller state is, is good, and that will be our test. And if we do that, then that will put us in a position to work with uh, other parties that share that view after the election. And we can do that ourselves, uh, because we are, I maintain, a social democratic party. And finally, uh, the, uh, the, the, I think that there's enough challenges about unfairness uh, without, dealing, without concentrating on the royal family. I have my views, but I would urge us to concentrate on the real unfairnesses that exist out there. Okay, I've got to try and read my writing, which is um, a challenge. Uh, the first question, I think, was, was, was less aimed at me, but it was about privatisation of public services, and I certainly agree with um, the fact that we need far more different kinds of ownership models around co-ops and mutuals and all of that. That ought to be taking a far greater uh, role in our political agenda, I think. Uh, on the monarchy, the Green Party is a Republican party. Um, we don't think it's right that the, uh, the, the, the monarch uh, has a, a constitutional role. But I have some sympathy with Evan's point as well. There are an awful lot of other big, wealthy people out there that we ought to be focusing on. And one of the things, as well as the state funding for political parties that's been talked about, would be about breaking up the power of the media, these massive monopolies of the media that have so much um, hold over us. Um, Opening up com Compass, yes, again, I, I agree. I hope very much that Compass can kind of be the sort of microcosm of the kind of uh, political society it would like to see. So I hope very much that that uh, vote goes in that direction. But actually, the last thing I want to talk about, um, well, I have to say I'm a bit disappointed that we haven't talked about more, is about the environmental crisis that we face. I have this real sense that we are sleepwalking towards a disaster. And in an audience like this, not to have talked about it more, I find really, really strange. I mean, I just feel like we're all in this kind of other world and actually the planet is burning and maybe I've just spent too long talking to climate scientists, no. but actually, you know, there is a very, very real crisis out there. A friend of mine was telling a story about, a true story about this little girl in Indonesia when the tsunami was coming and she'd just been taught about what a tsunami looked like. She knew how to recognize the movement of the sea when a tsunami was coming. She was aged eight. 
and she was running up and down the beach trying to persuade her parents and everybody else on the beach that a tsunami was coming. And they always have to be silly reading their papers, you know. And I, I feel a bit like that little girl running up and down the beach saying, okay, watch. And, you know, in terms of answering the last question, yes, of course, part of it is about changing our own behaviour, absolutely. But it's much more than that. It's got to be about government putting in place an enabling policy framework that enables all of us to move our habits fast enough. Because the issue about the environmental agenda is that it is massively urgent. And, and that kind of changes the, 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 the dynamics around it, in a sense. It really is about what we do in the next five to 10 years <coughs> that will make the difference, I believe, about whether or not we have a fighting chance of avoiding the worst of climate change or whether we don't. And that seems to me to be a bit of an organizing principle that I wish we'd spend a bit more time talking about. It is deeply related to the social justice agenda, to which I'm also passionately committed to, because if we're not going to get prosperity by more and more economic growth, then we're going to get prosperity through more and more radical redistribution. There is a wonderful match between these two sets of ideas, and that's where I think the realignment should be. Because, you know, tackling the, the, the climate crisis, the environmental crisis, the social justice crisis, it's not that we don't know what to do, it's about political will, and the real question is whether or not we're going to go down as a species that spends all its time monitoring its own extinction, or whether we're going to hurry up, take some steps, and try to avoid it. Well, what a nice bunch of questions. Um, on, uh, on Compass, look, I, I think that the way that the people who are running Compass have positioned it, and I think this is actually a really important function, is as a place where people of the centre-left come together, not just Labour people. And therefore, I'm completely relaxed about the idea that Compass would open up to members of other political parties. Because I think, given the scale of the political challenge that we face, uh, you know, I, I want people to vote Labour, don't get me wrong, but I, I, I understand the importance of respecting other political uh, traditions. And I've talked in the past about the, the liberal political tradition. Now, I personally think that the current leadership of the Liberal Democrat Party is totally betraying that tradition. Um, but I think that those traditions are important, and indeed the green uh, tradition uh, as well. Just on AV, just because uh, Evan raised AV. Uh, Evan, I will share a platform on AV with anyone who I think could win votes for a yes vote in the AV referendum. Uh, but I, but uh, you know, I do say I think this is going to be a hard referendum uh, to win, uh, and I think it will be you know uh, harder if um, if certain people are at the front of this uh, uh, campaign for reasons that are obvious. Uh, uh, um, on uh, uh, on the second point, I just want to make is about this the consumption, the challenge around consumption, and in a way related to what Caroline uh, said. And this is where she and I have slightly different uh, thoughts, and I have slightly different thoughts from the questioner. Look, the, the challenge is to have low carbon economic growth, not to be for a policy of no growth. I, I honestly tell you, we won't persuade people to come with us on the environmental cause if our agenda is to say uh, we're not going to grow as an economy. Because it is so much easier to ensure that you can raise people's living standards uh, at a time when your economy is growing, not, not growing. And actually, to echo something Caroline said, though in another context, we have the tools for low carbon economic growth. We have many, many of those tools. It just requires political will to, to put them into effect. And you know, I'm totally with Caroline about the urgency of this, as you will uh, gather from what I did uh, in uh, government and the centrality uh, of this. On the monarchy, look, if you want to celebrate the royal wedding, you can. If you don't want to celebrate it, you can't. That is a benefit of, you don't have to. Uh, that is the benefit of living in a uh, free uh, society. Uh, I'm going to be going to the royal wedding, actually. Uh, uh, so I shall be celebrating it. The last thing I will just, just say, if I, if I just take sort of 20 seconds to say this, I, I just want to mention somebody who's our chair this evening, and that's Neil Lawson, because I think Compass is doing an absolutely fantastic job at both sort of holding people like me to account, but also a kind of place where these incredibly important issues for the future are discussed. So, Neil, more power to, to your elbow and all of the people you have with you.